Welcome to Together San Diego and thank you for joining us. I'm Paola Hernandez Jayo. Our guest today is Barbara Bree, Chief Operating Officer of Blackbird Ventures and Chair of Programs Committee for the Workplace Equity and Civility Initiative. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yes, I'm excited to talk with you about you know, the upcoming event that uh, the Union Tribune is uh, co-sponsoring with us. Thank you for being. First, let's go ahead and start talking about the initiative. You were one of the founders of the initiative. Tell us why you thought this was important and how you went ahead and started forming it. So at the time I was um, serving on the San Diego City Council and the Me Too movement was gathering traction all over the world. Women were speaking out about abuses by well-known men like Harvey Weinstein and others. And I started thinking about what could we do here in San Diego? I mean, I've lived here about 40 years. My life has been about San Diego. I've started two organizations that empower women, Athena San Diego for women in the innovation economy and Run Women Run to elect more San Diego women to office. So I called together the leaders of Run Women Run, Athena, and also the Lawyers Club, which is the Women's Bar Association in San Diego, uh, to discuss what could we do. And one of the women uh, piped up, we were sitting around my conference room table in City Hall, piped up, Barbara, it's not just about sexual harassment, it's also about pay equity. And many women, including me, in many parts of our career are paid less than comparable men for the same job. So that there was born the idea for the work, what became the Workplace Equity and Civility Initiative. Uh, we did a few moderated uh, workshops where I tried to put together a microcosm of the San Diego workforce uh, to talk about how we could move forward uh, and create an equitable workplace for, for everyone. Talking about an equitable workplace for everybody, Barbara, I do want to talk a little bit about your beginnings in your career. You've had a very interesting career. I showed a picture uh, a few seconds ago about one of the groups, one of the recognitions that you've received. I'm going to share a picture now about the beginnings of your career. Tell us a little bit about this because this kind of also tells the story of why the organization uh, is to be today. So uh, this dates me. Uh, first of all, you can see that my hair has had many eras and it is naturally curly, but you know, you can wear your hair any way you like today. This is me in 1977. I was the second woman in the Capitol Bureau of the Sacramento Bee. At a time, there were very few women journalists anywhere. And actually this speaks to one of the issues about glass half shattered. I had an amazing mentor, Frank McCullough, who was the managing editor of the Sacramento Bee. And he believed in me and gave me this opportunity. I mean, I did have a unique background. I had an MBA from Harvard and it was unusual. You know, I was a business writer and he believed that with that background, I could write stories that um, other kinds of journalists couldn't. So he put me in the Capitol Bureau of the Bee, uh, which was a great uh, professional opportunity. It actually led to my job at the LA Times a year and a half later. And but yet I did have a Me Too movement at the B, a Me Too moment. Um, a senior Brown administration official who will remain nameless um, would call me at home at night on my landline. We had landlines back then, <laughs> <laughs> no cell phones, and he would want to come over. And I, you know, handled the situation as best as I could. I depended on this uh, man for, you know, as he was a great source. Uh, and but I never told anybody. I didn't even I didn't tell my girlfriends. I didn't tell my B. I didn't tell the Brown administration. I told nobody. I just kept it a secret. Uh, and so I realized that these issues, you know, impact women in many different jobs. And it takes a lot of courage to step up. Now, tell us a little bit about the initiative. I'm going to share some pictures of when it was launched how this went about, and then now we can also transition into uh, the organizations that are involved with it and also the event that you have coming up. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is the official launch of the initiative. Uh, I think I, I was still on the city council at the time, and this was shortly before the pandemic shut everything down. And uh, the initiative, uh, I turned it over to the Lawyers Club to run, and they brought in the San Diego Union Tribune and the National Conflict Resolution Center. Uh, it's Dana Kopman, uh, one, uh, an attorney. She is one of the co-chairs of the initiative. And uh, Jennifer Rubin, who's a partner at Mintz, is the other co-chair. 
And the idea was, and there's Jeff Light, uh, the idea is to sort of to get um, employers of all types all over the region to sign on to a civility initiative, uh, civility, um, a civility, I, I don't know, a statement that they would treat everyone in their in the workplace uh, equally and equitably, not equitably. And uh, so this was the launch. Uh, here was a launch uh, where uh, several employers actually signed uh, the commitment. And then I think a little bit later, the pandemic shut, you know, came and kind of sh shut down um, our efforts to move forward. And the event that we're doing on June 23rd is an effort to restart uh, the initiative. And we've seen that this issue is just as timely as ever. Uh, recent news coverage in the San Diego Union Tribune actually about uh, issues about harassment and pay inequity in the craft brewing industry. Um, and then a headline uh, last Sunday, uh, largest county employers face abuse claims. So this is a very timely issue. Uh, we want men to come. Uh, men are very important in um, making sure that we have an equitable workplace, that we finally uh, shatter uh, this glass ceiling. And what um, I, the reason I proposed this program and invited Colleen, Colleen Emmerman here to speak is because the book she is the co-author of really offers solutions. I mean, I'm tired of talking about this. I, you know, I've been in the, as you can tell, I've been in the workplace a long time. I've faced a lot of issues. I, you know, it's time to talk about solutions. And I'm a person who wants to solve things, not complain. And so uh, Colleen will be speaking at the event, which is going to be on Zoom and is free to the community. And I, please sign up now because we are running out of spaces. And we're going to have take questions from the participants. Or we're going to have breakout groups so that you can talk uh, more intimately about what you've heard. And then we're planning a follow-up program for July 28th to, on, to talk about how we can take actions in our organizations and in the community based on what we've learned. That's wonderful, Barbara. I'm showing you on the screen where the audience can go ahead and register. Thank you for mentioning that it is free. It's via Zoom, Wednesday, June 23rd from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. There is limited capacity, so please register for this free virtual event if you're interested at glasshalfbrokenevent.eventbrite.com. I'm sharing there. There's also going to be a raffle of some of the books as part of this. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, the Union Tribune and some of the other sponsors have purchased some of the books. And uh, after the event, we're 25 uh, lucky attendees will receive a free copy of Glass Half Broken. Thank you very much, Barbara. Just to talk a little bit more about the initiative, I did share for the Workplace Equity and Civility Initiative that uh, more information can be found at workplaceequityinitiative.com on your website so they can join as well. Tell us a little bit more about the structural changes in organizations and some of the goals, some of the changes that we would like to see. I know this may hopefully it will happen in my generation, maybe in my daughter's generation, and also actions that each of us as individuals uh, can take to help this, this initiative. So in terms of changes, it starts with the hiring process. It, it starts with how you word a job description, uh, where you post it, how you interview, uh, whether you treat you know, all the applicants in, in an equitable way. So it starts with how you hire. And uh, many of us you know, are in positions where we sit on hiring panels or help write job descriptions. So we have a role right there. Um, second, once you bring someone into your organization, it's how you bring them in, what types of professional development you allow them to have, what types of opportunities you give them to grow, and to make sure that you know, you're off offering them to women um, as well as men. And women of color um, face particular um, more challenges um, than white women. Um, it's clear from the data. And compensation and performance reviews are all a part of making sure we have an equitable workplace. 
And Colleen will address a lot of this more in detail on June 23rd. And of course, then the book goes into even more detail. And what I really liked about the book, and remember, I've read a lot of books on this topic, and I've been in the workplace a long time. These, the recommendations in the book are very practical, uh, both for what you as an individual can do, what you as an organization can do, and the important role that men can play. Men play an outsized role. My best mentors have been men. Um, I actually worked for a woman at one point in my career who actually was a hindrance and didn't um, <laughs> didn't actually help my career uh, grow. So men, we really need you. And this is actually a win-win for all of us um, if we can have uh, an equitable workplace in which we finally shatter the glass ceiling. Thank you, Barbara. This will be a wonderful event. Again, registration is free. The event is glass half broken, Wednesday, June 23rd from 4 to 5.30 p.m. You can register at glasshalfbrokenevent.eventbrite.com for free. So make sure to participate, register, and it's a very important topic where we can all make a difference. Thank you very much, Barbara. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you all for watching. For more of the Together San Diego lives, you may visit San Diego Union Tribune.com slash Together SD Live. And if you would like to view more of our live streams, you can go to San Diego Union Tribune.com UT today. Barbara, something else that you'd like to add? Well, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you on Zoom next week. I'll be moderating the event. And I'm looking forward, hopefully, from this event, we will get a core group of a few hundred people who will be able to truly make San Diego known as a place with organizations that have equitable workplaces, which will give us a competitive advantage in both recruiting and retaining talent. Hopefully. Thank you very much, Barbara, and I will see you next week at the event. Thank you very much, and thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you, Paula. News is more important today than ever before. I'm currently outside Otay Mesa Detention Center. I'm about to uh, get a report at Sharp. Out at Sunset Cliffs. COVID testing site. We live for these times when we're able to bring the news into the homes of people who need it the most. I thank all of you uh, for supporting our work. When you subscribe to the paper, um, is you're telling us that you believe in what we do.